Yo, it's your boy Alex THSC, Mr. Box Office TV. And if you don't know, you need to get to know small wins. Topic of the subject today on the 34th day of Tottenham Hotspur not having a manager. Small wins. Small wins from the performance on Thursday against Manchester United, which we drew 2-2. Yes, the game's gone. Absolutely gone. No, there's no, there's no really point of talking about it now because it's finished. We think and move on to the next game against Liverpool. But small wins is a description from certain Tottenham fans that say that Richarlison did his best. He ran about more. He used lots of endeavour. And that was a small win for Tottenham Hotspur. That's the positive we need to look at. Small wins is the way that Skip endeavoured on Thursday. Small wins is the fact that Perisic, even though he's very experienced, crossed the ball really well and got into good positions to cross the ball very well. Small wins in the fact that we were, we were going on the front foot in the second half after that diabolical first half. What, the reason why I've named it small wins is exactly why I described all those players. After that diabolical performance against Newcastle, there's no small win of this. No, none whatsoever. We're not talking about babies. Yeah, if you're a young child or young person, you take small steps to get to your own goal. But we're talking about experienced professionals. And we're talking about small wins. Tottenham Hotspur have been failures for the last past 22 years. Well, since the last time we won a trophy. For me... This isn't a small win anymore. If you can look at a small win, maybe it's the fact that Tottenham Hotspur nearly got up to winning the championship under Pochettino. It may be a small win that we got through that era without having a stadium and playing at Wembley and getting through that. It might be a small win that we could have won, we could have won the Champions League. We nearly got there. We nearly won the Holy Grail, the Champions League. Is that really where we're going at at the moment, or are we just trying to just grab at something, just to grab at something, just to show that something looks right at this club? The fact is, there's nothing right with the club at all. As I said before, and I'll say it again, none of these games will prove anything more than we just want the season to be over. And that's it. Because them stepping up right now is too little, too late. It's, it's kind of disappointing that we, we still clutch at straws with these certain things. Now, I understand that everybody's got a right for an opinion. But... We can't continually make these judgments at the moment because making these judgments on players, like for instance, Jan Juma, that is, good, is only on loan at the moment at Tottenham Hotspur. The fact is, we don't know his future. He's not had enough game time to say show what he's worth. But also, does he fit the plans of the new manager? And fit the plans of what Tottenham Hotspur expect from a Tottenham Hotspur player. And that's it. The fact is, the squad is disjointed. As I explained on other streams before, the chemistry between the players is completely gone. There's no partnerships that are recognised in this team at the moment. When you had the partnership of Vanyama and Dembele, Vertonghen and Alderweireld, 
that was something that was a stable of our team under Poch. When you talk about partnerships like, for instance, the Michael Dawson's and Ledley King's, because Ledley King, without with Michael Dawson, without Ledley King, Michael Dawson was absolutely nobody. Even though he was a leader, he was he missed his his guidance from Ledley King. He's shown himself to be a leader, rather than ver- verbally being a leader. Sol Campbell, with certain players, worked really well. Back in the era of George Graham and Glenn Hoddle, it was. One of those things that kind of shows you that partnerships are so important and it also helps the fact it does create leaders in the team as well. We're completely missing that at the moment. So when I'm hearing what I'm hearing at the moment that, you know, we need to have, there's some small wins, there's a little bit of positives that we can clutch onto for the next season, for the com- for coming couple of the games and then, maybe going into next season. There's nothing you can tell. The most unpopular opinion that comes from myself, that you might end up being without your best centre-back right now, Christian Romero. Because is he going to fit with a partner? Now, if you've got that question mark on him working well with somebody, you shouldn't have him in the team. You should sell him because, like I said before, you need partnerships and you need chemistry throughout the team. And it's also important on your sub bench as well. So when it's time for them to step up, they step up. This is a bang average league. There's a reason why I mentioned the fact that Haaland is an above average John Carew. And this is something I will go into a little bit further later on, because it's not going to be on this video. The fact is, you need decent manager with a system that works well with the players, decent couple of players that work well together with good chemistry, and then you've got a very good team that can compete for the league, for, for top four, at least. And some trophies as well. Unfortunately that ingredient. Is something that Tottenham Hotspur were missing. That was just a manager bounce last year. Under Conte. Conte. Gave him a target. And they. Complete, they completely. Made, made themselves known with that target. The target was top four. And they achieved it. Unfortunately, that was the best that was the best they could get out of those players for that target. Tottenham should have moved on with what Conte wanted in his plan. But they didn't do that, and then we find ourselves right now with May- Ryan Mason. It's like a beginning of the movie where you had that potential of something special but ends up being a damp squid and then it goes back onto video and rather than being in the in the box office and that's it. And it's that's that's really Tottenham Hotspur in a nutshell. And that's it for me. I don't feel that we're gonna be it's, it, it, this is not going to get any better this season. And unfortunately that's the way I feel and it won't change until this season ends and that's it. Moving on to another subject, because we're moving forward. I saw something today that just shows you why this club is an absolute mess at the moment. And, and to be honest with you right now, they need to get a manager in that is actually committed. Because the fact that Tottenham Hotspur didn't approach Maurizio Pochettino is a shambles. If Tottenham Hotspur approached Maurizio Pochettino and he said no, at least they can say, well, they tried to get him in. 
But the fact that they didn't do it and he wanted to come back, that just sums it all up. Because we need that manager that we're getting in committed. And then Tottenham Hotspur need to start looking at how they're going to move forward with the way that we're playing, attacking-wise, free flow and attacking football, pressing. High energy pressing. That's what I want to see going forward. With these players, it's not going to do it. We're not going to do it with these players. And that's what I'm saying. But that plan needs to be implemented throughout the club at the moment. And then you make that plan better as we go on. And that, that's my ideology of a good club. I think people, as fans, we will get on board with this more further with that completely, and that's it. So I'll leave it there. On the 34th day of Tottenham Hotspur not having a manager, the worst kept secret in football. And as I say before, and we're going to finish it off like this, I'm leaving out all day, every single day. And let them know. And that's how we do it on Mr. Box Office TV. With Alex CHFC. And I'm out. <laughs>